trigger warning. If you are a millennial, you are going to have hard problems with this show. We saw Space Jam, so you know what that means. at the beautiful Chicago Theater to talk about a movie that is Chicago. <laughs> Bill Murray, Michael Jordan, Bugs Bunny. All of them are here in a movie that could be a movie that some of you think is flawless. And I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, you might be wrong. It might be great, but not for the reasons that you think. We're gonna get into it all. Brief synopsis of the plot. This is a movie, very simple premise. There is a theme park on another world and they need to entertain the guests. So the plan is to put the Looney Tunes into slavery <laughs> and <laughs> keep their park uh, a, a, a tourist spot. However, what they weren't betting on was that Bugs Bunny had a trick up his sleeve and that trick was before they could be uh, taken into slavery, they would play a basketball game. Bugs recruits Michael Jordan to join him in a weird netherworld underneath our planet. We'll get into it. While the cockroaches from the alien planet steal the souls of basketball players. Again, a perfect film succinctly told. To talk about this film that I can easily say none of us grew up on <laughs> is my co-host, Mr. Jason Manzoukas! <laughs> What's up, jerks? <laughs> How we doing, Chicago? <laughs> oh, all right, balcony. Yeah. All right, oh. Jason. Paul. Did you ever see Space Paul, Jam? Today was the first time I've seen Space Jam. <laughs> Jason, today was the first time I've ever seen Space Jam. <laughs> and. To add insult to injury, I did do an abbreviated live read of Space Jam with Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan at UCB. Really? But it cut out a lot of the parts of this movie, yes. I thought that Wayne Knight, who I played, was the bad guy. Well, he kind of is. A little bit. Oh, um, boy. This movie, I know this is going to be controversial for a lot of you, this movie is fucking terrible. <laughs> I know that if you are a boy, probably from Chicago, of a certain age, this is insane to even consider. But this movie is straight trash. <laughs> Hold on, Jason. Maybe 
<laughs> Maybe there are kids out here who grew up just loving a good old fashioned cash grab. Maybe they like they just wanted to see this their movie. favorite products advertised <laughs> or, for or 85 about, minutes. Or talked about half of the products are just mentioned by name simply to shoehorn them in there. I believe eight minutes of this movie is a clip reel of Michael Jordan on shitty grainy video. Yes, and another, another eight minutes is just clips of Looney Tunes cartoons, old ones. It's this is an entire this whole movie is a clip package. <laughs> fuck this movie. <laughs> also, fuck you, Chicago. <laughs> on. That note, I bring out the looniest tune of them all. My co-host, Miss June Diane Raphael. How are you, June? I'm good. How are you, Paul? I'm great. June Space Jam came out in 1996. Um, did you see it in the theater? I did not. First time seeing Space Jam? Today. <laughs> Today, this very day. So, uh, I want to get to the bottom of the just premise of the movie and where it started. Was the... Was the idea to get to figure out a way to get Michael Jordan and the Looney Tunes <laughs> together? They well, like, did we start to work there? Together. They've been to wanting be to fair, work together for Michael a while. Michael Jordan had met Bugs Bunny. They wanted to work together. They were looking they were, for a vehicle. They were trying to find a project. Um, well, this because is actually... genuinely, or was it just Michael Jordan has a number of deals? with these various brands, and we have to make a movie about it. June, I will say that the basis of this movie is a little bit more wild. It's based on a commercial, and I'd like to play the commercial. An advertisement? What's the commercial for? Well, Nikes, of course. Oh, oh okay. So here Bye. is the commercial that this movie, someone was like, got it, that's the movie. Just give me 88 more commercials, and we got a whole movie. Across the universe, people are asking, what fiend would steal Air Jordans? Oh, goody, more Air Jordans for me. Pebble Beach. This is no way for a pamper superstar to travel. What the truth? And they're all mine. Give me you those Air Jordans. No, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, no, yes, no, yes, no, no, yes, no. Take these or else. A giant pencil with an equally giant eraser. I smell trouble. I smell popcorn. You got better popcorn. Even while it's hot. Even while it's better. Our heroes have made the world safe for truth, justice, and Mike's royalty tips from Nike. That's all, folks. That's my client's line. It says so in my uh, uh, deal. Jeez. Okay. 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 That was that. <laughs> that was exhausting. Was this what commercials were like? I, I don't know. In 1996, know. that was a short commercial. That, like, gave me seizures. What was I, that? I, I that, felt like I was watching, like, an adult swim. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it is a lot going on. They packed a lot into it. The director of that commercial is the director of this movie. Oh, boy. That well, this adds is what's up. so crazy about the movie because to get even to get to that, which is the I guess the basic idea of it's fun to see Michael Jordan with Looney Tunes. The premise of this movie, Space Jam, I guess we'll talk about the title later and what it means, but <laughs> why? But what a long way they went, what a long <laughs> road they traveled. Oh, yeah. To get there, there had to, there had to be an easier way to get those two things to meet than this plot that we Oh, really? We I watched. mean, 
here's one thing that could have made this movie a million times easier. Marvin the Martian is from outer space. Why not? And would maybe want to be a bad guy, and then that would set up the stakes. Why not just have it be Michael Jordan enters the Looney Tunes world? Great. Just like easy, Roger Rabbit. Easy, nope. easy, easy. So this exists in a world in which there is a different animated world, which is the world of Danny DeVito's animation characters. Yes. And they exist, out, they exist in our outer space. The They're Looney not Tunes. Looney Tunes. The Looney Tunes cartoons exist at the center of our Earth. In there. Yes. So they, they are beneath us right now. The Looney Tunes live in the crust of the Earth. Is that canon? Is that have we? Do we? Is that understood that the the I Looney Tunes Can universe is the cite core? Some is, source material. And it's a world in which humans watch Looney Tunes, and people in space watch Looney Tunes, and it seemingly is a world in which the Looney Tunes are currently shooting, yeah. because at one point, when they are captured, the cartoon stops. So, but it never, never in this film, where the Looney Tunes are We're just calling as... calling this a film? Never in this 88-minute commercial. This isn't unspooled. <laughs> This isn't a film. This is a space jam. I, I cannot tell you how many people said that this movie would be better served on Unspooled. Um, they, uh, when when um, Michael Jordan lands in Looney Tunes land, never does he say, Whoa, Bugs Bunny? Wow! Michael Jordan is nonplussed by being brought into the center of the earth and interacting with legends from his childhood that we know he knows because he goes, hey. He just saw them on TV. He's like, watch Roadrunner instead of a, a, a bad news report about how much I suck at baseball. No, he just saw these. He, 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 he gets brought into the Looney Tunes universe and literally should be like, I just saw you on TV. I grew up with you. Bugs, I love you. Nope. Nope. No. Oh, hey, Bugs. Is it... A His energy is like, of course, next. Is yeah. it a... And what is else it a, are we doing? Gina, you think it's like a comment on celebrity that Michael Jordan at this point, a gigantic celebrity, he's unfazed by everything. He's seen it all. Listen, all I could think about watching this movie was how much time Michael Jordan spent just acting on his own in front of a green screen. Oh my god. I mean week weeks just doing just reactions inner, yeah. and lines with like to tennis no balls one. on sticks. I mean by the way and he's like, no, I don't no, even you're reacting like that's bugs. Bugs is that that's Daffy. I, I, I mean I honestly don't even I think that you're being kind. I don't even think the eye lines were good in this movie. Oh so, no. It, it is Fisheye lens on him. It feels like the camera is like, like mounted on his chest. Like a lot of the times, his head and neck are arcing backwards. Like, 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 like someone's like dangling a knife at his throat. Like, get back. I'm gonna get back. Um, and I read a lot of stuff before. Like, well, yeah, Michael Jordan's not a great actor. He's not a great actor. I don't I have a problem a with. Job. Don't think I have a problem with him as an actor in this movie. I I think he is doing an admirable job. job in this movie. I don't. I mean, it's an insane thing, but it's like. I I I, I don't know. Jason, like, Michael would Jordan I have is rather Charles Barkley had been the lead of this movie. <laughs> I mean, or Larry Bird. By the Come way, on, Larry Bird. I mean, let's bring. What if it was Larry Rodman. Bird, Danny Ainge, Robert Parrish, classic Celtics lineup? No. Michael Jordan is a legend, and <laughs> I did. I, I find him to be, he, I mean, he's not an actor. And so you're watching it with that in mind and you're giving him that runway to sure. work with. And no, no, and he was totally fine. I'm teasing. That, he was totally yes, fine. Yes, I think but he does a totally I, capable, competent job. Especially period. when you consider that he was alone all the he, time. Yes. All he the time. And, and all the other actors, for the most part in this movie, if you were to make a graph, 
you could say 99% of the other actors are not actors. They are sports stars. Yes, but yes. like so, if you think about what Michael Jordan is doing in this movie, Michael Jordan is a part of a sociology experiment. He is acting alone for m- a month? Yeah, I mean, a month. That would make him... That would make a person go crazy. Sure. To do could, what he did. It could make someone, a grown man even, grow a Hitler mustache. <laughs> Michael Jordan was so good, he could Ooh, reinvent that one, mustache. Chicago. He could take that mustache back. <laughs> That's how good he was. He could reclaim the Hitler mustache. Yes. I will say this. <laughs> if I'm Charles Barkley... And we all know that Charles Barkley, uh, great player, even better commentator on NBA games. Um, but, uh, but I would be a little bit offended that they named a dog after me. Yeah. Like, they, Michael Jordan's dog is Charles Barkley. But, like, the dog is named Charles. I'd be like, motherfucker, I showed up to your movie. You named a dog after me? Fuck you, Michael. Go fuck yourself. Call that dog Shaq. <laughs> I mean, seriously. You like? I thought that was offensive to Charles Barkley. When that dog is attacking Michael when he comes back from the um, the the he comes back from the baseball game and he's not done well and the dog comes out and tackles him right and is licking his face or whatever. The woman that comes out to take the dog away, I believe, threatens to cook the dog. <laughs> I believe she says that I will cook you. I was like, whoa. And that wasn't his wife. That wasn't a true That was his wife's mother, I believe. Okay. Um, by the way, why does the school bus get out in front of, or the Little League bus get out in front of Michael Jordan's house? Like, the, I, I, I assume uh, uh, well, Michael's wife. Well, you can wife, just put in a request to have a Little League bus get off at your house. Got it. You just have to file a request with the town. I've done it. By the way, it was so funny. It wasn't like the boy just got off. I think his mom is the coach. It was everyone got off and like scattered. I have to say the one thing that I thought was the most comical was that Michael Jordan lives a very modest existence. This is arguably the richest, like biggest celebrity of the time. And he's living in three bedroom, maybe a four bedroom, probably not even a pool in that house. Like not even a house that you would showcase like on a sitcom. It is a <laughs> modest house and he's staying in a hotel that looks like a Motel 6. I thought they were maybe trying to prove a point about his transition into baseball. That's what I assumed as well. Yeah, that he, he just was would in- stop at McDonald's, get a big coke, sit in that room by himself. He's drinking out of a McDonald's cup. Oh. (laughs) Just watching the recap of the game. What? Honestly, Chicago, what was good about this movie? Everything. (laughs) Everything is what what we're saying. Um, Can I show you? We did talk about the sociological experiment of Michael Jordan. Um, I wanted to show you a little bit of what that sociological experiment looked like. This is Michael Jordan playing against green screen creatures um, to get a sense of the hell he was in. Oh, my God. He is in a world of full green, surrounded by men of green. He did a great job. That's, I mean, that's terrifying. I guarantee he has nightmares about this. This is... A nightmares where he's surrounded by green men. And it's at and the nobody's point... nobody's talking to him. This is a nightmare. It's at the point, too, where green screen technology is not quite great yet, so everything is green. Like, that is a hellscape. Um, because what was really fun about Roger Rabbit was, I think the for the most part of the movie, or at least I remember it, a lot of the cartoons were in the real world. Here, Michael Jordan is in the cartoon world. And that's weird. Um, it, like, and by the way, he's disappeared. Michael has disappeared. From a golf game with Larry Bird, Bill Murray, and Wayne Knight's character. He gets, he gets lassoed into a, uh, a, uh, um, the cup. Is it called a cup? Yeah, the hole, the hole. The hole of a golf 
The hole. Wow. Hole hole. I've never played golf. <laughs> the hole at the, the end of a golf hey, Jason, round. The old tin cup, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure, Kevin <laughs> Costner. Um, the old tin cup. Uh, he gets like he gets a hole in one. He reaches in, and Yosemite Sam's lasso comes out and sucks him in. And Bill Murray and Larry Bird are like, eh, cool. <laughs> this is also a movie where an alien spaceship flies over yeah. a minor league baseball game, and they're like, whoa. Anyway, what's going on? Anyway, with the parents? everything's totally cool. They also at the end of the movie. It lands, Wayne Knight gets off, he's like, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Jordan. Like, wait, hold on. That's a fucking cartoon spaceship. There is a... It's not just a spaceship. Again, keep in mind, cartoons are invading the real world. It's not just that it's a spaceship. It is a cartoon spaceship. You know, like... That's what's so weird. Are, I mean, yeah, I guess I don't know, dude. Are cartoons, is the presence of cartoons just integrated into this reality? <laughs> I don't know. It seems like people are just okay yeah. with cartoons living, worlds of cartoons living underneath them, above them. Here's the thing. I agree with you, June. We need to build a wall to keep these cartoons out of our country. Build that wall? Question mark? All right, let me talk about the other troubling thing about this movie. When they agree... Just the one other. Just yes. one, just one more. And then everything else is just gold. <laughs> the movie is built around this conceit like they need to learn how to play basketball to beat the Monstars who have stolen the souls. We'll get into the stealing of the souls in a second. But... <laughs> to beat this other team that seemingly is unbeatable. They don't ever learn or train. It's like they extracted... Wait, but can you back up for a second? Yes. So the reason... This, this, this is why, to me, it's such, a, it's such a long road to travel. So the reason why they're playing basketball, and we've set up that there's a basketball game yes. to compete in, is because the... Aliens have an amusement park? No. The, yes. They, what? Oh. No, the basketball, the reason why they picked basketball as a sport was because they looked oh. at a lineup and they said, and okay. And they looked shorter. They're so short. But they're that, not that much shorter. That was the other well, problem I had. They're bi the, the aliens are bigger than Tweety Bird. They're bigger than some That's of the Looney Tunes. But Tweety wasn't going to play. I mean, he was just going to be more of the bench guy. Tweety was in the game. Tweety goes into an iron lung. <laughs> Tweety literally is in an iron lung. Listen, what year is it? 1996? 1996, 1996. the year of Adventures of Pinocchio. Polio is still all over the place. <laughs> and it's most so affecting our canaries. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, okay, so just back up for one more second, please, 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 please. So, okay, in this other world that's up there in outer space, there's yes. an amusement park. Moron Mountain. Moron Mountain. Which is a clever play on Magic Mountain because Warner Brothers owns stake in Magic Mountain. So the way that they were going to tie it in is make it really, uh, like, fun. Call it Moron Mountain and say that the rides suck. Wait, to kind of make Warner kids want to go to Magic Mountain. Oh, so that's a Disney slam? Magic Mountain, like, as in Six Flags? Yes. Oh, no, no. Six Flags. It's, I'm being serious. Like, they, wait, Warner Brothers owns Six Flags? So Warner Brothers has a deal with Six Flags Magic Mountain. So all the Warner Brothers characters appear there. So they're like, oh, this is a fun tie-in. Like, our characters are there. But what they do is present the shittiest thing and say, like, so technically in our world... They've won because all of our, those characters do perform at Magic Mountain. Oh, Wait, fuck. what? Oh, oh Jesus I, Christ. I'm not kidding. I don't know what you just said. I do right. understand. I wish I didn't, but I do I understand. I also suspect I have an inkling that I don't care. <laughs> 
so, so Magic Mountain is a thing that exists. Sure. Six Flags. And so, Moron Mountain is a takeoff of that. That's right. correct. So in the world that we are all living in and occupying this world. and sustaining this world, in that six, like if we were to go to a Six Flags right now, we would see Magic Mountain. No, we would see we would the, see Looney, Tunes the Looney Tunes characters. Right, but would we see more on Mountain? Well, no. no, no, no. But Jason, you're getting confused. Okay, Jason, we would see Magic Mountain, and of we course. would be there, which yep. is the play on More on Mountain. So right, but those... I want to see More on Mountain from Space Jam. Okay, because I love Space Jam because I'm a Space Jam nut. The Looney Tunes characters would be there, which means that in reality, the one that we're all in, it's, the star, what are they called? The, the Monstars. The Monstars won. The because monsters. they have put them into slavery because at they would Magic have been Mountain. There. Because so like, in the real world, they won. Wait, so we're living in a post Monstars victory? Yes. yes. Right now, in this moment that what? we're all in. Are we in the Matrix? <laughs> you got to ask Keanu about this. <laughs> um, Siri, call Keanu Reeves. <laughs> That's really disturbing. All right, so. Wow. The, the, when That's they, shocking. When they do uh, decide to play this basketball Wait, game. Wait, but okay, oh, so yeah. Paul, I'm sorry. Back up, back up, buddy. So, <laughs> so in, okay, so the reason why, wait, so more on Mountain. So the, the amusement park isn't doing well or people are complaining? Yes, you saw what happened in more on Mountain. There's a ride where a cigarette or a cigar flame ignites the ride, shooting the passengers of the ride car out and crashing them down into a pit to which the son of the father is like, this place sucks. Then Danny DeVito's like, everyone says our place sucks. We need to make it great. Let's steal, we need something crazy. We need something loony, Looney Tunes. Go get Looney Tunes. A very simple A to B clean to C. Premise, clean premise, clean, he, clean, clean. The Danny DeVito character also has a bank of monitors and he sits on a remote control that makes each TV play a different Looney Tunes clip. What button would he have had to have clicked? What button gives you Looney Tunes on every screen, but no different. repeats? So then they go to get the Looney Tunes. What? Yeah, they're going to get the Looney Tunes. That's why they tie Bugs Bunny up in all those chains and then bring him to the town hall to say, guys, we're <laughs> fucked. We're being shipped out of here, and we we are we are uh, literally we are we're on a uh, we are on a slave journey. We are now being taken to the moon to work as indentured servants. This okay, is... so then where does basketball play in? So Bugs Bunny then quickly comes up with a plan and goes, uh, "You can't kidnap us unless you give us a shot." Or some bullshit. He writes okay. it in like a fake rule book. Yes, and tapes it in there very badly. And then presents it to them. Like, okay, yeah, we'll give you a chance. And they go, well, we can play and him in anything. why do they give him a chance? Because they're fair. Uh, all right. Um, you know what? Uh, you know, no one ever wants to, you know, nerd luck pound, nerd luck blanco, nerd luck bang, nerd luck bumpkiss, and nerd luck not. They are fair characters. Is that their names? Yeah. Okay. And you guys like this movie? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, so okay, Pound, so then, Bang, Knot, and Bumpkiss and Blanco, they say... We'll give you a shot. We'll give you a shot. And then Bugs Bunny says, looks at all of their stats and sees that they're a little bit smaller, yeah. but not much. Not much. Not really much. And says, we will challenge them to a game of basketball? Yep. A game a game that none of the Looney Nobody Tunes themselves know. Right. Right. They're just... Like, why not challenge them to a game of, like, anvil tossing? Or, uh, you know, any of the Looney Tunes sweet spots? I mean, yeah, they really just racing went wild, outside their comfort zone. Racing the Roadrunner would be a great one. Easy. Road a race. race. Just a race. Boom. 
Um, but the coyote would probably fuck it up. Uh, it's, the, um, it's a movie, though, so they pick this thing that they're not good at. And here's what I think I'm really missing from the plot. A plot? It, uh, <laughs> is you kind of want some of the bear, Bad News Bears training montage. They don't do anything to train for the game besides watch Richard Simmons. They kind of rest it all on Michael Jordan. They meet one good player, Lola, Lola Bunny, Bunny, who... Well, let's meet Lola really? Bunny now. If you are here and your man just whooped at Lola Bunny, yeah. you need to break up tonight. Lola Bunny clearly... Um, <laughs> In the, the, the tracks of uh, Jessica Rabbit, a, a sexualized character, um, and she comes in. Well, I wouldn't say she's sexualized, but she is definitely... You wouldn't say she was sexualized? I mean, she was sexualized, but she right. spoke out against it. Th Bugs that's Bunny what I was is saying, like yes. horny for Lola Bunny, and she's like, no, no, no. So much that he pops a human erection. He literally is stiff as a board when she touches him. His whole body becomes a giant Bugs Bunny dick. Um, That's, she, wait, his whole body becomes a Bugs Bunny dick? <laughs> Didn't you see that moment where his no, whole his body whole goes body up? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Fully erect uh, in the air. But Lola Bunny comes in. Um, you know, she's, you know, Bugs Bunny's not wearing pants, yet she is. Like, here's the Bugs thing. Bunny this also is not great. wearing a top. This is great. She... Lola Bunny... Lola Bunny is wearing clothes. Yeah. So now we have precedent for bunnies needing clothes. That means, in juxtaposition, that Bugs is nude. And... I came. Like, um, Michael, look, again, Michael Jordan there. is alone in a room. I want you guys, because you guys might not understand, Michael Jordan is currently right here, entirely surrounded by green screen and people in green screen uniforms being like... Not even doing the voices of no, these characters silent, because... silent, silent people wearing all green. Just think about that. And he is forced to cycle through every face he has. And, and I genuinely believe, can you go backwards, Paul, for yeah. just a second to where you just were for a second ago? Right here, I guarantee if he turned this way, he was shooting a BVDs ad. <laughs> like he it's was the like, same framing. Um, so Lola Bunny comes in, shows everyone she's great at basketball, and then leaves. It didn't seem like it was a tryout day. It just seemed like we're practicing. Anyway... Little do they know that our amazing um, Pound, Blanco, Bang, Bumpkiss, and Knot are stealing the souls of basketball You're players. You're saying souls. They, they say the word stealing. talent. Yeah, I think I, it's But their hold talent. on. They seem, well, at least Charles Barkley, like, walks into a wall. Bonk. Like, that doesn't so you think them. it's your soul that keeps you from walking into walls? I feel like they I have do. an update. There is no soul. It does not exist. It is not stealable. They steal their talent. Well, but, right. but what I would say is the talent is different, reveals itself differently to each player because they seem like zombies. Some seem like zombies, uh, except for when Patrick Ewing's masculinity is questioned in a kid's movie where basically the therapist is like, do you still fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't that, that was not, there was, that was part of like two horny moments that I wrote down that were almost back to back. Oh, because it's the Barry White style music scene. Yes. yes. That leads right into the therapist asking Patrick Ewan if he's having trouble performing anywhere else other than on the court. I.e. the bedroom. Test for electrolyte so blue they pose, look. CBC, Can you pause for a second? Yeah. Okay, this is Muggsy Bogues, right? Yeah. He is not walking. He is definitely not walking. He is not walking. He is on a camera 
He's but, on a do- He's on something with wheels because I think they wanted him to seem so short that he was even shorter than this doctor. And so they were like, we're going to have you sit on something on wheels because the joke is you're so short. By the way, let's just break this down for you. These aliens don't know what the fuck they're doing. They are stealing the talent of two centers, two power forwards, and a point guard. That's who they have chosen for their team. Two centers, two power forwards, and a point guard. And then the shortest player ever in the NBA is one of them, Muggsy Bogues. Well, but that's okay. It's okay. But again, if you are trying to put together the all-star team, and I love Muggsy Bogues, it's an odd choice. And then Sean did you just Bradley. Call him, did you just- Sean Bradley is the center that you take? Sean Bradley averages eight points a game. Okay, this is a year where Hakeem Olajuwon and Shaquille O'Neal are playing in the NBA Finals. Two amazing centers. They take Sean Bradley. Are you guys doing sports on Unspooled? <laughs> How do you know all this? I'm just saying I grew up in this you era. You just also called him Bugsy Moogs. Oh, sorry. Which, by the way, he should immediately change his name to <laughs> Bugsy Moogs. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's a crazy, it's a crazy, it's a crazy. Yeah, that guy's too big. I mean, I think they just wanted him because he was so tall. He's yeah. so, maybe so that's tall. Why they, maybe they had to put Muggsy Bogues on a dolly because the, 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 it was tr- trying to keep them all in one Spike Lee shot this scene. Like, that's like a Spike Lee moment. You ever see it? Like, is. Oh, three, it's always. Like, everyone's, yes. <laughs> everyone's always on a dolly. It's weird. But this is an odd thing. So you watch who hits their head. We'll see. Et cetera. And we've scheduled a 12 lead stress Look at, test in neurological. But he's moving he's his just shoulders. He's moving his shoulders. He's just moving. <laughs> he's, just, he's just moving his shoulders. You it's, know there are like six takes where they're like, you gotta move your shoulders. Just to make it seem like, because there's six takes where he's like. <laughs> it seems to me. It also seems to me that he is on. Like, I feel like he is on a rolling chair that is hooked to a rope because this doctor is walking. So let's see. Uh, this is like the stormtrooper bump of head. Let's see what happens here. EEG, reflex test. They all did their own stunts. What's crazy is that now, this. I thought that was a pretty good stunt, though. Yeah. I also it didn't see it coming. I, did, I didn't see yeah. it coming. It was funny. Let's watch it again, Paul. EEG. I mean, that's pretty good. Will you play it again and watch play Patrick in Ewing? Time. Please oh, I watch wonder, Patrick Ewing. I wonder, if Muggs, I wonder if Muggsy had to be on a rig because they, had, they were going to fall down on a mat. There's definitely a mat behind those guys. Maybe. But the doctor is not. The right. doctor's not on a rig, right? Battery to EEG. Patrick Ewing is so slow. This, this girl. Patrick Ewing. Play it the one om- more time. Yep. Will you play it? Can we make a loop of this? Watch Patrick Ewing, please. EEG. Who is the best actor of this uh, dream team? Oh, Muggsy Bugs. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Barkley does some good stuff He's here. Great. Oh, Barkley's the best. Five feet nothing. Block my shot. When did your first start? Okay, having? can you pause for a second? Why does he have Edvard Monk's <laughs> The Scream? If I go to a therapist's office and they oh, have out. the scream. I am out. Not a print, but the, pink, the painting. That is not Gotta go. That is the painting yeah. of the scream. It's time to go. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's time to go. And if my therapist looks too much like Freud, it's a little on the nose. I want to play the Patrick Ewing uh, sex scene here. Uh, right. Look at the look at the perspective, the forced perspective of how big Patrick Ewing is in this. By the way, Patrick Ewing, the only I think actor of this bunch, because he was in the ex- like one of the Exorcist movies. Well, Charles Barkley has hosted SNL many times. Oh, at this point, okay, you're probably right. Here we go. Besides basketball, where you find yourself, yeah, unable to perform, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just asking. And I'm. St- no, I fuck. 
Uh, <laughs> it's a crazy, it's a crazy thing to have there. Um, this movie is full of crazy moments. Um, what was Basketball Jones? That's a, that's basketball the Basketball Jones, Basketball Jones. It was. Like I mean, a, that's like a Barry White song, right? So is it like a song? Yeah. Oh no. Cheech and Chong. It's Cheech and Chong. I did not know that. Thank you. Okay, Thank you, so um, Basketball Jones is a Cheech and Chong song remade by Chris Rock and Barry White. Is that it? For this movie? Hmm. Guys, again, I suspect this is a bad movie. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, Chicago, but this seems to be a bad movie. It's not a bad so, movie because it's not? it shows that if you all take drugs, you'll play better. <laughs> yeah, it is. That it is a very, like, steroids is very present. And the C story for this movie is about cartoon characters needing a stronger union. How do you mean? They have, a, they have multiple union meetings. There is, like, they are unionized in a way that is negative. Yeah. I mean, this movie even gives up on itself at a certain point, which is Bill Murray enters the end of the film, and they're like, hey... Which, by the way, this, I am always Bill for Murray Bill Murray this is, era. is, I mean, Bill Murray, okay. Bill Murray is my favorite. Yep. I love him so much. He, ha- he elevates the movie. A million percent. He absolutely elevates the movie. And his performance, I mean, the thing that I so appreciate about Bill Murray is his performance is never sweaty. It's never, it's, he's working on his own time frame. And he's working in a reality that he, we all join in on. Like, he's just so he's completely relaxed on at screen. Ease. Yes. He's confident and at it's, ease, and he gives you faith in the movie that he's in. Yes, and I, when, I, when I was with him during this movie, I was happy. I would and I also, was okay. I would also I was argue, okay, and I was trying to stay with him for as long as I could. He's the only actor besides Wayne Knight that is actually getting to interact. Like, so you feel like, oh, this oh, is what, what a, a movie is supposed to be. Actors doing lines, being funny, not just sports stars standing very stiffly, uh, playing other sports than what we know them for. Um, but he, when he comes in, this is his intro. His second intro. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't know Dan Aykroyd was in this picture. We call him Dan Aykroyd. Jokes also, for the okay, kids. Also, okay, so did anybody else slightly freak out about seeing Bill Murray in shorts? <laughs> I, I, uh, I loved it and I <laughs> hated it. I had a crazy reaction to it. I my, like my, that Bill Murray was like, I'm wearing a t-shirt. On, like, I feel like this outfit is great. I liked, I, I love everything about it. Uh, I didn't mind it at all, with the exception of... This game takes place in Looney Tunes world at the center of the earth. How did he get how there? How did he get there? Well, here, he'll tell you. You've been bugging me. Yeah. Just how did you get here, anyway? Producer's a friend of mine. Just had a teamster come and drop me off. Yeah. Uh-huh. Boom. That's it. The movie gives up. Producer's a friend of mine, Ivan Reitman. True fact. Yep. They don't even try. No, no. They're to all... This- there's a lot of hand waving, like, oh, it's a movie, don't worry. How long is the final game? 35 minutes. What do you mean? This game starts and there's 35 minutes left of the movie. Oh, oh, wait, are you saying that we don't watch a real time basketball game? No, I'm <laughs> saying. Are you upset we didn't watch every quarter of this game in real time? No, what I'm saying I am, is. For one, grateful. That the game is only 35 minutes, if I'm being honest. I, I'm saying... I don't need to see the halftime show. I don't need to see what's up. I'm saying that's a long time to watch a game that is nonsense. Like, this should have been 10 minutes tops, a 10-minute oh, game. Like, 35 minutes oh, yeah. of this? It's only Michael Jordan jumping around CGI characters. There's not, like... It's I like, guarantee what? he still has... Very vivid nightmares yes. of green-clad people 
attacking him in a green room. Like, that's the stuff of MJ nightmares. I mean, we we gotta... Oof, boy. Um, <laughs> was it weird to you that, yes. uh, that Elmer Fudd just has a gun out on the court? So many people have guns. There's multiple guns that are just... Isn't there the Pulp Fiction moment has guns? Yes. So this movie comes out two years after Pulp Fiction comes out, and they put in this moment with the guns... And the guns look so real. Like, they, like, like Elmer Fudd's, like, rifle is funny and whatever, but when they have that Pulp Fiction moment, that's like a, that's like a, that's like a Glock. It's like, and then they shoot out those monsters' teeth. It's pretty aggressive. By why, the way, they're good shots. Why is this movie called Space Jam? So, they're not a good Space question. Jam. They why? are not in space. How are they defining the word jam? Yeah. Well, I think like jam like What's basketball. What's a jam? Like an NBA now, jam? let me ask you this. Maybe Is I'm, that a thing? Maybe I yeah. don't know. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. J- J- I said like NBA jam. She's like, is that a thing? And I said, oh. yes. Oh, then is. that is what it is. What oh, is, I didn't know that either. What is that? Like it was a video game called like NBA jam. Uh, there was uh, a uh, game? Okay. Tell me yeah. more. Fine. I accepted. You think, what is it? And you think that's the titular jam being referred to here? Oh, my God. So you, wait. Wow. <laughs> Hold on. Let's back you guys it's okay. up. okay. I'm fine so, to not know. Yeah, like when jam is like you're jamming the basketball. ball. Let me ask you this. When people get together to play basketball, do they call it a jam? No, but they're okay, jamming the basketball. Okay, let me just say something. Excuse to me. Excuse me. I played basketball for many years. Uh-huh. I was June's about to dunk. MVP of my high school team sure. and highest scorer many years in a row. I was 5'9 at the age of 11. I played basketball. I, I was a great player. Wow. You were a great player? Yes. Okay. Yes, I, I like was. That. I never went to a jam. I never referred to games as jams. I, I genuinely it's not don't a game, know. Like, it, no, it's not like you're, it's not like, I never let's go to a jam. Basketball. It's jamming the ball through the hoop. I never played basketball. Here's what Slam I'll say. Dunk. Did you I play any sports? I never played basketball. I never played basketball. I was captain of my high school soccer team. Soccer, I was okay. captain of the track team. I was Tracker. president of the marching band. Don't worry about right, it. We've got a pretty clear picture. But let me be clear, never once did I hear any of my basketball playing friends say, let's grab the ball and go jam. You guys are so wrong on this. What sports did you play, Paul? Yeah, what sports did you play? Because I know well, you didn't play yeah, any. Yeah, Paul. Intramural basketball. Intramural? Yep. Arsenic and old lace. <laughs> Anything goes. Broadway Boundless, I wrote my own material. First of all, what? jam is a, like when you do an NBA jam, jam is a basketball term, am I right? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I didn't just watch basketball, I'm so sorry, I played it. Wow. <laughs> well, let's, let's uh. just... Everybody get up, it's time to slam now. Okay. These people love it. These people love it. Get a dance party. Okay. Get up. Okay. Come on, Chicago. Come on, okay, Balcony. Okay, fine. Boo. The fact that June and Jason were thinking about jam like the spread. I wasn't. I just, but so here, okay, so fine. So now I guess I understand. Space pervert preserves. Now I understand the jam of it all, but, but, but the jam does not happen in space. Right. That is the it happens in the, the Looney Tune. Yes. Can it I talk in the to equator. you? Can I talk to you guys? It should about, be called Earth's Core Jam. I, I need to talk to you guys a little bit about what happened here with these, the, the idea of the jam. 
So, the fact that you have that much paperwork yeah, for, what this, is going on? for this movie is genuinely unsettling. I mean, I have so much to tell you about this movie. The one thing... Um, well, let's get into the jam facts first. Because um, the jam facts are oh, good. Oh, God, do we have to? Um, there are jam facts? Okay. So, uh, Tony Hawk posted... Uh, a while ago, January 5th, 2019. The skateboarder? Yes. He posted... In 2019? A- yep. Okay. He posted, in 2003, I was requested to meet with Warner Brothers about doing a film tentatively titled Skate Jam. <laughs> they were bringing back Looney Tunes and wanted to start on my project immediately. A week later, back in action bombed and Skate Jam was forever shelved. But that didn't stop them. They also discussed Spy Jam with Jackie Chan, Race Jam with Jeff Gordon, now, um, Paul, and a okay, golf so Paul, pump. Can told, I pause yeah. you for a second? Yeah. This disproves your theory your about jam the word theory jam. That jam is a basketball thing. It's not. It's not a basketball thing. It's a skateboard thing. I think they were they were drafting off of the success of Space Jam, which drafting is drafting giant- is a cycling thing. And a racing thing. They Lance also, Armstrong has bike jam. They also are going to do a golf-centered film with Tiger Woods, uh, which they don't have the title for, but jam, jam I think. Jam in the woods? <laughs> um, I think he made that movie. You know, he, just, he just have to go on Pornhub to see it. So, I mean... Also, just, just to give you an idea of why they wouldn't want to change the title, um, guess... All right. <laughs> all right. Guess how much money the merchandising from Space Jam is made. I don't want you guys By to yell it out. I I'm don't looking want you... out on the audience tonight. Right. Yeah, People have spent billions. a small fortune on Space Jam merch. Look at you, morons. Okay. These two idiots have bankrupted themselves. Okay. No doubt buying Space Jam shirts on eBay. So, not the film, but merchandising. Like, what, just want to put a figure on it. Any, how much money the merchandising of Space Jam was? No, hold on, you guys. I'm going to say a, a billion dollars. <laughs> June? I'm sorry, I'm distracted. A grown man just walked down the aisle in a diaper. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Is there a gentleman in a diet? Oh, here he is. He's dressed as a baby. Oh, he's got a baby. And I got him as well. He wants you to hold him. I'm going to need that man to be escorted out of the premises. Because he also appears to have my face on a bib. I will need this person, quote unquote, removed. I'd like him to space jam his way out of here. Um... All right. Just quick question. Chicago, how many people are wearing diapers in the crowd? Balcony's how many people definitely are wearing diapers. diapers. Dipe life. <laughs> Late show, Chicago. Hashtag dipe life. Hashtag space jam. Hashtag doing number twos while the show's going on. Don't want to miss a second. Pooping and peeing in my little boy's diaper. I'm a preposterous man. That's you. That's your theme song. All right. Jason says $1 billion. June, what do you say? I don't know. I would say maybe $20 million. Okay. In 2009... It was Wait, report- this movie came out in 2009? No, 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 1996. Okay. In 2009, the Chicago Tribune reported that Space Jam merchandise pulled in at least $1.2 billion. <laughs> and, and... That's what I'm talking about, people. And... An industry insider calculated that the brand's global economic impact was closer to four billion, or maybe six what? billion what are we dollars. About? Well, let's be what clear. Are we saying? How about this? Stand up right now if you are wearing Space Jam merch. 
Stand up, dum dums. Wow. I mean, you guys are part of the problem. Look at all this money. There's like four grand in merch tonight. I mean, this movie, when it came out, was greeted with scathing reviews. People said things like this. A clear marketing tool. A relentless publicity machine. A big screen babysitter about salesmanship. (laughs) Um, Entertainment Weekly said it was greed promoted as synergy. (laughs) And to paraphrase... (laughs) To paraphrase that seminal media study, the broadcast news, this is what the devil looks like. (laughs) But yet, this movie that averaged a D-plus cinema score made a worldwide gross of $230 million. Oh, I don't know what's what anymore. I don't want to live in this world. Yeah. This movie not only pissed off the critics, it pissed off the creators of Looney Tunes. They fired Mel Blanc's son from doing all the voices because he wanted more money, and they just cast different people to do the voices. Uh, Chuck Jones, who was the original animator, was like, I hate this movie. Bugs Bunny would never recruit anybody else to help him in his battles. That's awesome. That's awesome. (laughs) I mean, it's some crazy, crazy stuff. The thing that I'm disturbed at, and I don't think people really talk about, is when they take the talent of the NBA stars, they turn into, like, terrifying creatures, as if their talent is steroids personified. Yeah, I agree. I also took issue with the fact that when they don't have talent, it seems like the barometer for that, for us to really understand as an audience that they have lost their basketball talent, is that, I mean, I mean, we understand why, and it's because they've lost to a bunch of girls playing basketball. And that was really upsetting. Yeah. Even though when we watched it, Paul, you said that's not the reason why. (laughs) (laughs) Do you guys want us to step out? No, I was saying... Maybe we should just... Why don't you guys and I just kind of... I mean, Paul knows I loved playing basketball. And I said, wait a second, are we to understand that, like... But you were playing girls basketball, not basketball. That's what the whole conversation was about. Take another sip, Paul. Take another sip. I don't know which side to come down on it because I don't remember what I said exactly. You were defending the film. Yeah. If we can call it that. Yeah. And you said, no, 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 no. That's not what they're saying here. And I said, that's absolutely what they're saying. I think he, what I thought they were saying was that he could be beaten by kids. But then in the immediate scene, it was like, I was beaten by girls. So I was wrong. I thought he just, I thought, oh, that's cool. (laughs) They're showing like great young female basketball players. What a great message to send. But he can't beat kids. It's Charles Barkley. Of course he could beat kids. He should be able to beat kids. He's an adult NBA player. He should be able to. He should be able to beat any young people of any gender. By the exactly. Way, he should be able to beat adults. Just yes. civilians. Sure, but I think does. the idea was, in my mind, I gave the film the benefit of the doubt, which you was like... You sure did, buddy. And you I was sure like... sure did. And I was like, oh, he's showing up at a basketball... Paul, like this is so... I don't even... Because I'm with June on this 100%. This is crazy what you're saying. I told her I, re- I pulled it back because I just thought, oh, because it's Because cool. here's the reality. If Charles Barkley's talent was taken away, anybody, any team of young women could just crush him. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> I was just saying that I thought he just, he's like, all right, you know what? I may not be able to play it at the NBA. Let me find some kids and I'll do it. And he just happened to find uh, women or young girl basketball players And I was like, okay, yeah, it's no difference then. But then in the next scene, he's like, I was beaten by girls. I was like, oh, well, okay, fuck this movie. Did you audition for this? 
I... <laughs> As a basketball phenom of the time, <laughs> did you audition for any of these parts in the game? You know, I was just focused on the sport at that time. I wasn't looking to transition into an acting career. You were, you were just WNBA I was bound. Just like, but now this is interesting. You, so you didn't go with your basketball team to go see Space Jam? No, I didn't. I mean, I, when did this movie come out? 1996. I was 16 years old. I was playing. I was in the prime of my career. <laughs> well, let's go, wow. let's go out to the audience. Let's talk to them. Let's see if they are... Do you need your hat? Oh, yeah. Let's, you know what? I'm going to go out to the audience right now, and I have a special hat for the occasion. Um, I'll hold the mic, <laughs> is what the hat says. All right. My hat is on. This is a reminder. Got your hat. Got your mustache. You're going to the audience. Let's do it. Um, sir, your name, Team Monstars or Team Toon Squad, and your question. My name is Frankie and uh, Hardcore Team Toon Squad. And my question is, did you notice that at the end of the game, they flash to the scoreboard and they're down 10 points? And he's like, all right, get the ball to me. And then it goes back to the scoreboard and then they're just down two points. I did notice that. That is a big thing on the internet, that the scoreboard, no one caught it. It's an animated film. It's not a real thing. They could have at any point fixed that scoreboard because I believe if I'm right, um, they, they score, they go on so, such a score run that it's as though like, it's, it's a blowout or something like that. But, and then it goes down after halftime and then it goes down again. It's weird. The scoring is weird and not right for this movie. Did you guys I notice that when you were... just imagine the internet threads have lit a fire. I not only didn't notice, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, it doesn't occur to me at all to, to care, I don't know. Not only is this man in a costume, he's in a full body costume, a Toon Squad costume as the Tasmanian Devil, which reminds me of a quick story that I will tell. Uh -oh. oh, God. All right, everybody. Brace yourselves. <laughs> yeah, really, get ready. Honestly, just center yourselves. Just remain calm. Go ahead, Paul. I may have told this on this podcast oh, by before. By the way, uh, I would love it if all that this guy just said right now when Paul gives him the mic is... <laughs> you can now be a hero or an idiot. Let's see how he chooses. All right. I'll give him this chance so you can think about it as I tell this brief story. I was going to college. My parents were dropping me off at college. My mom said, I want to help decorate your room, get some stuff from Bed Bath & Beyond. I said, okay, sure. Get like a shower curtain, things like that. That's decoration? I want to help decorate your dorm room? I'll get you a shower curtain? Oof. She leaves and comes back, and everything she has bought is Tasmanian Devil. Ah. Tasmanian Devil shower I curtain. I have heard this story before. Tasmanian Devil toothbrush holder. Tasmanian Devil soap dish. Looney Tunes way. bed sheets. Looney Tunes comforter. Oh. I am an adult going to college. Oh. And my room looks like it came out of a catalog for a five-year-old. And oh. I said to my mom, I don't even like this character. And she said to me, but you played the Tasmanian Devil video game. It's your favorite character. And I said, no, it's not. We didn't return it. And for the whole freshman year in my dorm... Fuck. It was fully decked out with Taz. What? Was there ever a time in which you, forgive me, June, brought a girl back to your dorm room? <laughs> June? 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 June?
<laughs> June. <laughs> and she saw your Tasmanian devil sheets, shower curtain, and bathrobe. And she was like, rah, 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 rah. Chicago, we're having a great time. Yeah. All right, sir, your name, your question. Uh, Brian, and so an urban legend is Michael Jordan took a year away to do baseball because he was gambling on basketball, and this was an agreement with the commissioner. Now, in this movie, he cheats in every sport that he participates in. Do you think that was a good marketing tool for him? Amazing well, question. Here's what he doesn't do, gamble on any of those sports, right? No, he gambles on all of them. Oh, he does? Oh, my bad. <laughs> yeah, I guess um, he does, oh, that's huh? interesting. So, because that was another thing that I wasn't, because be, this movie, again, didn't hit me because I was too old for it. I was removed a bit. This is, is this in the era where he is playing baseball, or has he already moved on from that and it's commenting on him playing baseball? Commenting. One of you decide. He's already won six championships at this point. No. After, I, after I just repeated, baseball. I He's repeated gone to what baseball. this person is. Has he gone to the Wizards yet? Hold on, hold on, hold on. No. No, no he, came back to the, he came back and had the best season, right? Wait, wait, wait who, what, what's the facts that we need to know here? Sir, so lean over just a little bit. This is right after he came back from baseball. He won three championships previously. Got it. So three championships, and then he comes back and has like one of his best years after baseball, right? He comes right? back. Can I start? I'm so sorry. Yeah, I know this. The, Does he they, come back to the Bulls? Yes. Okay, great, great, great. They great. have the 72 and 10 season that still hasn't been beat. All right, so that, yeah, so he comes okay. back and kills it. So that's why he's willing to make fun of himself for the baseball debacle, right? Thank you. All right, ma'am, your name and your question. Uh, my name is Rebecca. Um, and my question is, so during the halftime show, Wayne, Knight char Wayne Knight's character goes into the Monstars locker room um, to spy. And I'm wondering what he was trying to gain. Yeah, because it wasn't like they were playing great basketball. It was yeah, there chaos like on the court. The idea that he would try to go in there to understand like certain plays or strategy is absurd. It's just massive chaos out there. Okay, well, here's my other question, too. Michael Jordan becomes a cartoon at the end of the movie? Wait, what? At what point? When his arm reaches oh, out, like, oh, 30 okay. feet? Yes, yes. Well, yes, because they remind him that they're in Looney Tunes world in which Anything the laws can of happen. physics... The laws of physics do not, or the, yeah. the 3D world's physics do not apply. It's time to get a little loony. <sighs> And Such a good quote. <laughs> it's time to get a little loony. We have one Monstars person in the crowd. I see her wearing her Monstars jersey, so we will end it with you, ma'am. Your name, your question. Hi, uh, my name is Portia, and I was wondering. Um, Portia we De have... Rossi? No. <laughs> wow. Portia from Real Housewives of Atlanta? Obviously, obviously. Portia um, the car? <laughs> So the Looney Tunes obviously live underground. Um, Marvin the Martian lives on another planet, which is Mars, which exists in our solar system. Are we to assume that he lives underground or is Mars different from Earth? Well, here's a good question. So you're saying, is there a Mars underground? Because even yes. when the Looney Tunes are underground, there's sky and air and water and everything else. Yes. Mm. So yes, so there is so, a Mars. So Marvin the Martian lives on a Mars that exists in, in the our solar Earth. system at the core of our Earth, where all of the Looney Tunes exists. So at the, at the Earth's core is the Looney Tunes universe, which is uh, underground. Uh, uh, when Bugs Bunny goes underground in Looney Tunes world, I don't think it's our Earth. He's in their ecosystem, and the solar system exists, like space, Looney Tunes space 
exists within the core of Earth, right? Our space is where Danny DeVito lives, right? Because we leave our planet, go into outer space, there's a neon sign that points us towards Danny DeVito's planet. But then in order to get the Looney Tunes, we have to go back into our Earth, down, 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 Past, through the Warner Brothers Looney logo. Looney Tunes space. Yes, through the Warner Brothers logo into Looney Tunes space. That's correct. But not everyone passes through the Looney Tunes logo. Well, some people are just brought to set by producers. <laughs> and there's some sort of deal where they're able to broadcast and get those broadcasts live transmitted from space. Wow, this movie is Oof. deeper than I thought. Did you guys know that there was actually a Space Jam video game as well. I'll show you a little. I'll be honest. I only knew about the video game. So you can kind of, uh, yeah. you can just kind of take a look at what was going on there. Which here well, we get people down. So this is the kind of the great play action you get. Michael Jordan. All right, good. Buzz Bunny. It's a lot of. Were all movies made into video games at this time? A lot, yeah. A lot were. Okay. So here's some of the, it seems like everything is loading. Okay. Oh, it's not even a basketball game. <laughs> They're in Michael Jordan's house trying to steal his sneakers? That's part of the game? That's disturbing. Oh, you found a lot of sneakers. You found some shorts. This is a weird game. Is a plot-based game, not an NBA game? <laughs> oh, here we go. Evening, everybody in Looney Tune land, as well as Moron Mountain. I mean, here's the... Can I say something about the sneakers? It is interesting. Like, the movie is a commercial. I, I'm like, I understand that it's based on a commercial and stuff, but it really does posit a world in which Michael Jordan has no talent unless he's wearing sneakers. And well, he was just, wearing his golf shoes. So he couldn't, you know, he well, was sticking to the floor. I thought he wasn't wearing, because when he gets sucked into the Looney Tune world, aren't the golf shoes left up there? One is. One's on, one's off. Okay, so when he's down in Looney Tune world, he has one shoe on? Yeah. Well, it's hard to do anything with one shoe of on. Of course. That's why he's like, let me get, get me my shoes. Right, Here's, I guess what I'm saying is yeah. he could probably still play basketball with... Well, he no seems shoes. to also be like, let me see if I remember it. Oh, the thing that you're amazing at better than anyone in the world, you might have forgotten how to do? Like, even on a simple level. The thing that would kind of blew my mind was that he gambled his family. That was troubling. Yeah. And I thought for sure. Now, listen, I was so excited to see Bill Murray. Again, a crazy Bill Murray fan over here. It just, I love him so much. I was so so happy to see him, but I assumed that we were going to see Michael Jordan's son at the end. And I assumed we would tie that in and that he would come play somehow and he would... Well, he doesn't ever want to have his son be better than him. (laughs) (laughs) How could he retain his masculinity and manhood if his son was better than him or something? What are you saying? His son was better at baseball. He was already jealous of him. Did you? Okay. I'll leave it there. I've been here <laughs> the I'll whole leave it time. There. We have heard from the Toon Squad. We have heard from the Monstars. And now it's time to hear a different opinion. It's now time for Second Opinions. I relived my childhood while re-watching this. Just to have Paul June and Jason Mantzoukas Go criticize it While I still prize it I will leave it five stars Space Jam really raised the bar And if you tell me this was not a win I'll go and leave five stars again It's my second opinion Well, I think that it's the only one I will leave it five stars I will leave it five stars I will leave it five stars Give it up 
for Isaac. Well done. All right. Those were amazing songs. Now let's get into the reviews. 2,784 reviews wow. for this film. 77% are five star. Wow. wow. Um, this one is, um, the title is MJ's Ultimate Gift to the World. <laughs> this movie. Okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Michael Jordan's ultimate gift to the world? Mm -hmm. Is Space Jam. <sighs> this movie is definitely in my top 37 of all time. <laughs> All Sorry, right, Paul, I mean, uh, is this the review or is this you speaking? <laughs> Space Jam is Michael Jordan's gift to the world. I don't believe in coincidences. Every person is placed on this earth to fulfill a specific purpose. <laughs> Before being able to star in this film, Michael Jordan had to first get cut from his high school basketball team, vow to become the best player in the world, make over 100 free throws per practice, win the NCAA championship, then three-peat NBA championships, then try to play baseball, then come back to make this movie in the middle of his second three-peat. MJ had to have all these things happen for Space Jam to exist, which is arguably better than his entire NBA career because it has Bugs Bunny and Bill Murray five stars. That's amazing. Review number two from D. Mackey, Michael's Secret Stuff. I don't get this movie, but my boys 10, 12, and 16 all like it, and that's what matters. Five stars. <laughs> Precious Jewel writes, always loved the movie, ordered it because my husband wouldn't stop talking about it. But then when we saw it was on Hulu the same day, I picked it up from the post office. Oh, LOL. <laughs> well, I guess it's great for if the Wi-Fi goes down or on road trips or long flights. Five stars. How much are they planning on watching it? <laughs> I guess it's good to have a physical backup in case you need to see Space Jam. I mean... But it's like... A storm? Yeah, there's a natural disaster and... Or you're in like a country that doesn't have the uh, 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 streaming that can, that, that can accommodate as a uh, You need a hard copy. You gotta have that hard copy. Um, gotta have that hard copy. In case the hurricane copy. heist happens. Uh, Thomas W. writes, five stars, no questions asked. Michael Jeffrey Jordan is the greatest human athlete to ever grace our courts and our silver screen. America! Five stars. Wow. This is from JWW. The basketball fan in me was appalled by the number of obvious flagrant fouls committed in the game <laughs> by both sides, which went uncalled by referee Marvin the Martian. <laughs> and the fact that the clock operator seemed to be sleeping, seriously, five seconds passed in the movie while only one second came off the clock. But... This movie requires a lot of suspension of disbelief. Five stars. Oh, yeah. oh you think? Oh, yeah. You think? <laughs> this movie that takes place in Looney Tunes land requires some suspension of disbelief? Um, and then finally, this is from Anne Fry, and she writes, love this Anne movie. Anne Frank? <laughs> Fry. Anne Fry. Love this movie, so cute. I'm not a basketball fan, but I do know Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, and Charles Barkley. The other three, I'm sorry to say, I don't know them. <laughs> Five stars. That's great. Um, Jason, June, we talked about how damn popular this movie was. We know how much it made. We are disagreeing about the jam. The tagline was, get ready to jam. Why? Um, Why get ready to jam? 
Uh, and, um, and the other tagline was, together, they might just save the world. Nope, that's not part of the movie save at all. Save the world. Not oh, a thing. No idea the world was in peril. Also, which world? Looney Tunes world? Our world? Who knows? A um, couple of hidden things that you might not know but are fun to mention. The monolith from 2001 is in the movie. Uh, when they're flying towards Moron Mountain, you can see that flying oh, okay. past them. And when the uh, Monstars, as little creatures, go to the basketball game, they are dressed just like Tom Baker from Doctor Who, um, wearing the exact yeah. same scarf. Uh, Michael wow. Jordan would not agree to do the sequel, so it was canceled. Um, Until so now. <laughs> uh, they released many versions of these sneakers. There are an Air Jordan mid Lola. There's an Air Jordan mid hair. Uh, because Michael, uh, because Bugs Bunny is an honorary member of the Jordan brand. Uh, so there are many Bugs Bunny and Lola Bunny shoes out there. And finally, uh, last but not least, I will say this, that the Space Jam site is the same that it has been since the film was released. Never updated online. Just go to spacejam.com. Wow. Ooh, we Stellar Souvenirs, just like Stellar Skateboard. Exactly. You, you can click on that, and you can go here and watch screensavers, sound clips, postcards. This, guys, I need you to understand. This is what the internet used to look like. This, for me, looks like the internet. Um, yeah, wow. You can, you can oh, do, there's the gun. Oh, Junior sorry. Dam, the kids await you at the Looney Tune land. Click different parts of the picture for lots of funs and games. Coloring book, you can just color. A big, yep, color it in. Have fun with that. Um, so definitely check out the spacejam.com website. Wow. Jason, June, would you recommend this movie? Jason, first. Boof. Ah, boy, I don't know. This is a tough one. I know this movie's beloved, and I know this is like, for a lot of people, this movie was important at an age when they were growing up, and this was meaningful to them. This was a pile of turds for me. Um, it was neither good nor so bad it was good. It was, it was just kind of a commercial. It was a long commercial for, like, everything. Um, and, and listen, like I said, I'm much more into Looney Tunes, so it wasn't enough of that instead of the... It was much more uh, NBA basketball, all that stuff, than the Looney Tunes stuff, which I would have preferred. I would have preferred more space be given to the Marvin the Martians, to the Sylvester and Tweeties, to all of those characters that, for me, I grew up on. So the answer is, no, thank you, pass. Or thank June, you, next. Diane Raphael. Yeah, I mean, I feel the same, except I would have preferred more of the NBA players. Um, and I would have preferred learning a bit more about them, spending a little bit more time in that house. So you more would have liked rooms. to have gotten out of the Looney Tunes and just seeing yeah, basketball players. I wanted players. to be a part of that town and see where all those kids dispersed to. You wanted to be minivan. part of the, the town where Michael Jordan's playing triple A ball? Yeah. And I wanted to, I, I actually loved, I agree the house was not, it made no sense that a, that a man who made that much money lived in that home. But I did like that house and found it very comforting and like a father of the bride type of way. It looked like that house to me. You and, want to kind of see like a father of the bride with Michael Jordan. Uh, oh. I, by the I way, love the movie if, Father of the Bride. By the way, if that's the movie, I'm in. I mean, yeah. I'm also into a movie in which Michael Jordan moves to a small, moves to small town America in order to like have a family, play baseball, have a kid who plays baseball, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. And never, and it's never cartoon world. Or oh my God. I'm and okay with that. For a split second, when they were piling out of that minivan, I thought his wife was played by Regina King for just like two seconds. And I was so excited. I love her so much, sure. and I thought, wow, I had no idea that this movie existed, and I am about to watch her play his wife, and I cannot wait. And then it fell apart pretty quickly. <laughs> but that other movie I would have loved to have seen. Well, for me, I disagree with both of you. I wanted to see more of Moron Mountain. How do they run it? What are the rides? <laughs> What's the infrastructure? Well, you love theme parks. Love a you good love theme, theme park. parks. You have two fa your three favorite theme parks are... 
Disneyland. Yep. Moron Mountain. Yep. And the one in the Adventures of Pinocchio where all the bad boys get turned into into donkeys. Uh, it's totally true. It's called Pleasure Island. It's lovely. Um, <laughs> as long as you don't go on the ride. Because uh, it'll turn you into a donkey or whatever corresponding animal you're acting like. Anyway, no big deal. Uh, I agree. I was very excited to watch this movie. I got very nervous that we picked the wrong movie based on the reaction that I got online. And now I'm confident we picked the right movie. <laughs> Space Jam. File this under... You're wrong. Um, <laughs> thank you, Chicago! Woo! We did it, Chicago! Thank you, Chicago. Uh, what a great night. Thank you to Avril Halley, our movie pick and producer, who uh, is always finding us the best, uh, the best films. And you know what? Space Jam was one that we really definitely need to do. Uh, also, uh, our Chicago theater staff and audience, guys, um, there were some issues in Chicago. There were some audience issues in Chicago. I appreciate all of you for all your confusion. It was not us. Uh, we tried to deal with them the best way we possibly could. I think Ticketmaster stepped up there and really helped out a lot of people as well. Um, it, but it seemed like a real uh, clusterfuck for a couple of people, and I really want to apologize once again. But I think the end result is that we need to come back to Chicago. We love Chicago. We will be back in Chicago. A big thanks to uh, Nate Kiley, who, by the way, has a, a beautiful baby and is still pulling research down and just killing it at all times. Thank you, Nate. Uh, thank you for everyone in Chicago who treated us so good. All the amazing restaurants we went to when we were there. We really did. We did it up, and we loved it. We love Chicago. Oh, my gosh. So good, so good, so good. Um, and uh, and I guess what I want to say to you th is this. Um if you want to wear something that says how this get made on it, head to tpublic.com slash store slash HDTGM. And if you want to talk more about this, give me a call on our new mini episodes at 619-PAUL-ASK. That's 619-PAUL-ASK. And we'll talk about your life or we can talk about this movie. Uh, either way, you can leave messages for either one. We will deal with it all. Um, and then uh, finally, uh, I want to just say to all of you, Space Jam isn't good. All right, we'll see you next week on How Did This Get Made? How did this get made?